feeling good, huh? Oh, we got a feeling good kind of show for you tonight. Emerald Lagasse, welcome to Emerald Live, folks. Hey, you know, we have a really great show. It's going to be all about casseroles tonight. Oh, yeah, babe. Casseroles, you know. Oh, I see the look on your face. You thought you got ripped off now, right? Because you're thinking like green beans and mushroom soup, right? Tuna and potato chips. Huh? I can see it on your face. Nah, we're going to change that tonight. And we're going to change the way that you think about that one pot wonder called casseroles. We're going to show you some kicked up ones tonight. Guaranteed. <laughs> Absolutely. Speaking about kicked up. Doc Gibbs and the MLI Band! <laughs> All right. Fellas. Good evening. Good evening. All right. Good evening. Right. So when's the last time you guys had a casserole? It's been a while. Yes. Yes. It's been a, all, all, yeah. all of you? Yes, it's been yeah. a while. Oh. <laughs> We're going to change that tonight. <laughs> hey, it ain't about grandma's casseroles. It's cooking casseroles tonight here on Emerald Live. <laughs> All righty, all righty. Welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You got to have some staple items. Welcome. Hello. 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 That's a beautiful emerald green you have on. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. You got to have some just some staples, and then you got to have a little imagination to sort of kick it up a little bit. So when I started thinking about how I was going to kick up these casseroles, I started thinking about, oh, little flavor combinations that I kind of like. So... Here's what I came up with after it went, you know. There's a classic dish called tuna niçoise. Fresh tuna, potatoes, green beans. So I said, why can't we make that into a casserole, like a casserole salad that you would go to Polly's house with and say, okay, I brought my dish. It's a cold tuna niçoise casserole with anchovy dressing. Hey, that would be impressive, right? Okay, so we'll do that. <laughs> and then I started thinking, you know, this time of the year and casseroles, nothing like a good chicken pie. But I'm going to show you a little different twist because we're going to top it and crust it with potatoes. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, yeah, babe. And then, of course, you know, I go out there and I ask that www.foodnetwork.com question. And, uh, a very, very popular casserole that comes and comes and it keeps coming and they keep requesting it. So I figured we'd do a spinach and mushroom and four cheese lasagna. Are you excited about that? Yeah. That's the one. That's the one. You like that one? That's the one. That's good. I love it. That's the one. All right, we got Doc Gibson and the Emerald Live Band in the house. <laughs> Guys, if you would have just told me lasagna was going to get you excited, I, you know, I would have did it. I love it. We wanted to wait till today because yeah. we know it's going to be good. Spinach, mushroom, and four cheese Ooh. lasagna. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, let's go back to uh, Tuna Niswa land for a minute. Little bit of anchovies, little anchovy filet, and a little garlic. And what I want to do is I want to start by making a little paste. So I'm using a wooden board, and I want to add a little bit of salt. The granules here in the salt, can you see that, Buck? Is really what's going to help us out here. You like anchovies? Two? More. All of them. Okay. <laughs> My kind of girl. And a little bit of garlic in there, right? Kind of like almost the same way of starting a Caesar salad. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to press against the salt like this. And then with a fork like this, we're just going to sort of break up these anchovies. Just like what I'm doing here. Now, the next thing, we're going to emulsify this or make it into a dressing. We're going to make it into an anchovy dressing. And how we're going to do that, we're going to start with an egg because that's what you would use to emulsify it. And then, show you a little trick. You add a little tiny bit of mustard, okay? Because mustard's a good little binder as well. We'll kind of hold it together. And then I like a little bit of shallot in mine, or red onions. Then, now we get the fork thing going with the egg, the anchovies. So where are you from? From Mississippi. I knew that. <laughs> All right. So if you hold a bowl for me, we'll show them how we can just sort of... I'm right-handed. <laughs> it just suddenly occurred. <laughs> See, now slowly, whenever you're making an emulsion like this, folks, you got to go slowly like this. And... If you're like me, thank you very much, and you don't have a great helper like this from Mississippi, <laughs> when in doubt, see, you think the towels are just for, no way. <laughs> see, and then it'll hold it. And you want to drizzle it in. Now, I'm going to add a little lemon juice to this, and I'm going to add a little Worcestershire sauce. When we come back, another notch! <laughs> really warm and toasty outside, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we're cooking casseroles tonight here on Emerald Live, and uh, we just made the dressing. Let's finish it. Little Worcestershire sauce, or as much as you like. The juice of at least a half a lemon. Why do you say that? I don't know how much juice there is there. You know, you go to the store. He can't look inside of it. You got to see how, what juice is in there. I hate when you come home and you squeeze it and there's like nothing comes out. <laughs> I feel like I got ripped off. <laughs> I want to go back with the lemon squeezed in my hand. Talk to the manager, but... All right, we're going to take the seeds out here. I like it kind of lemony. You? I like it lemony. All right, so that's what we're going to do. Now! <laughs> <All right. laughs> Fresh ground pepper? Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> little pinch of salt. <laughs> All right, so there's the dressing. Let's move over here. Next ingredients for this Niçois salad. I got some pots here that I'm salting. Why? Because the next part to this are sliced potatoes, okay? I'm using red potatoes, sliced. Gonna put them in there so we can blanch them. So that's another magical ingredient. What you wanna do when you're blanching Try to set yourself up with another bigger bowl like I got here with some ice water. So that way when it comes out, you can instantly stop the cooking time. A lot of time what happened, people blanching, whether it's broccoli or green beans, then they take it out of the pot, put it in a colander that's in the sink. Now, you, if you live like what we do, <laughs> May, June, July, August, September, there's no cold water coming out of the sink. <laughs> so... Same thing what I'm going to do here. I got little French beans called Hardy Vert. You could use regular green beans. 
Salt's gonna bring out the greenness. We wanna get them just so they have a little crunch to them. So that's two more ingredients. Let's talk about some other classic. The tuna. That's what we're gonna work on next. Fresh tuna. Went to the old monger. Can see the beautiful color. Not a lot of fat, okay? So you can season it however you want. You can put a little essence. You can put just salt and pepper. I got just regular oil. Let's give it some flavor and put a little essence on there, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, you gotta season both sides. I hate one side of tasting food. I mean, don't you? Go to a restaurant, it's half seasoned? Does that mean it's half price? <laughs> now, season that side as well. <laughs> now we'll get the uh, skillet. Nice sink, huh? Yes. Compliments of the Sopranos. <laughs> now, let's go over some quick ingredients, folks, and then we're going to put this all together. Beside the beautiful tuna steaks, which we want to sear, okay? Gonna add just a tiny bit of oil inside of our skillet. Not a lot, you can see it. It's just to, it's just to sort of mm, coat the bottom. Mm. Okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start searing our tuna steaks. Mm. Now, hard cooked eggs. Put eggs in a pot, cover them one inch over, turn on your heat, bring them to a boil. You want to cook them for 10 minutes. That way they don't come yellow, or they're not this color, they're not, you can't. Perfect egg, 10 minutes. So we got some sliced egg. Got some tomato. Went to the market this morning, the regular tomatoes this time of the year. They're not happy. But those little Roma tomatoes, the little plum tomatoes, they looked pretty good, so we got some of them. Black olives, green olives, a little bit of capers, some fresh basil. So that's really the components now. We just gotta put it together. Now, here's what we're gonna do. How do you like your tuna? Rare, medium rare? All right, we'll take an average. Medium rare it is. <laughs> I love how cooperative you are. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna cook this tuna medium rare. We got our vegetables blanching. I have bib lettuce. That's a really, really nice lettuce for this salad. When we come back, I'll show you how it goes all together. Stick around, Doc Gibbs. <laughs> on keyboards, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And how about Lewis on those horns, huh? Yeah. Sir Charles on bass. The good buddy Texas Teddy on drums. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if you just fell off the moon and landed, Doc Gibbs is in the house. Yeah. All right, here we go show you what we're gonna do these beans we took them out nice little snaps no crunchy boom right in the cold water they're perfect now the potatoes how uh, how far you want to cook them you want them to be fork tender not too much not too soft not on the other hand either so fork tender what does that mean fork tender well that's when you can put a fork in there and they're tender <laughs> 
It's an emerald thing. <laughs> so it needs about another minute or so, and then we'll take them out. Now, the tuna. I took that out. I have our bib lettuce. We're going to start building this thing now, okay? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to just take very, very simple little olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, mm, just a little. Bib lettuce. I don't know where you get your bib. Where I get mine, it don't come seasoned. So I want to put a little bit of that bib lettuce. Then what I'm going to do now is also drizzle a little bit more extra virgin olive oil, just a little bit on that. Then, a little fresh cracked pepper. Next area, these tomatoes. See, I got a thing about tomatoes, especially this time of the year. Are we distracting them back there? I don't know. I hear a lot of talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, these tomatoes, they're happy, but they're not like happy, happy. <laughs> so, we're going to make them happy. What you do when you're in that situation where the tomatoes are, after you cut them, give them a little salt like this, even a little pepper. That'll make them happy. All right. So, now we got the tomato in there. You with me? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Same thing with the egg. Now we got the sliced egg. Oh, yeah, look. You don't have to, like, you know, come on. It's not a rocket ship here. <laughs> few green olives. Few black olives. Love that fresh basil. Yeah. Little bit of capers would be nice, too. All right, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the taters, take them out. Put them in the cold water. Okay, once we get them in the cool water, we shock them down. They look pretty shocked to me right now. <laughs> Want to make sure you get all the water out of them. Okay? Then again, what we're going to do is you got to get a little salt. Put the taters. And then what I do, take the green beans, put a few here and a few here, a few here, a few there. Hmm, escapee. <laughs> See how the taters are still just a little warm like that? Oh, that's perfect. Now, the tuna. You wanted medium rare? Medium rare. So we have a few tuna here, a little tuna, a little tuna, a little more tuna. Not enough tuna. <laughs> so we'll have a little more tuna here, a little more tuna there, and a little there, and a little right there. Now, that wonderful dressing that we made, we just come around like this and just drizzle it all over the salad like this, all over those taters, all over the beans, all over the lettuce. Okay? All right, a little essence like this. Bam! Hey, when we come back, another knock. Stick around with us, folks. Joining us, Emma Lagasse here cooking some kicked up casseroles. First one is out on the floor right now. We actually took that classic idea of tuna niçoise and we built it big so we could take it to Polly's house. But we didn't go there. All right, now I'm going to show you a little different chicken pie. 
just a little different. I, I'm a like chicken pot pie fanatic. And uh, this one I just sort of changed a little bit, loosened a little bit. Well, I'll show you. Let's start. What I'm going to do is begin with a little bit of butter. And uh, why I'm doing that, which I'll show you, in that butter, what I want to start with is, of course, some onion, carrots, and some celery, which classically, as you know, is a mirepoix. Now, we want to cook that. And the first layer that we want to do now is want to season it with some salt. And um, a little bit of pepper. Once these vegetables cook for about five or six minutes and they start getting a little, just a tad bit limp and flavors are coming out of them. That's what, why we're doing that. We're just sort of layering that. Then the next thing that we're going to do now is add a few cloves of garlic in there. Oh, yeah, babe. Then once that cooks for about a three minutes or so, so now you're looking at a total of about 10 minutes on the vegetables. Now is when we're gonna add a little flour to make a roux. So you work that flour in there. We don't need to cook this roux very long. We need to incorporate it. We need to cook it for about four or five minutes to get a little bit of that flour taste out of that. And then what we're gonna do, once that happens, four or five minutes, we're going to add the milk, and then we're going to actually, what's going to happen now is we're going to have this cream sauce in here, or this bechamel sauce. Are you with me so far? Yes. All right. Now, you look at this when you're cooking like this. When you work with a roux, any thickening agent, you'll never know how thick it's going to be until it comes to a boil. Okay? So, as you can see, this is pretty thick. It's come to a boil, and it's pretty thick, okay? So that's when your brain says it needs a little more liquid. And in this case, we're going to add chicken broth or chicken stock, okay? And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going we're to sort of work that in here. We're going to work it in here and work it in here, and then we'll know exactly when it comes to a boil, how thick it is. Now, in the meantime, little pinch of thyme and some mushrooms. And then you've heard the uh, terminology about deglazing something. You know, when you're cooking something in a pan, you take it out, you deglaze it. Well, sometimes you do the opposite of that, which is called fortifying, okay? And in this case, I'm going to use some really good sherry. All right? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> and what I mean by fortifying is that, you know, I'm not going to add a half a bottle of this. I'm just going to add just enough to fortify the flavor, okay, but not overtake all the flavor from this pie. All right. That happens. It cooks. 20 minutes goes by. This is what you got right here, Okay. It's reduced down, it's the right thickness. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add cooked chicken meat. I like plenty of green peas in mine. And a little parsley. Hilda's happy now. <laughs> now, just before you'll see the thickness of this again, But the chicken's cooked. The dish is done. So there's no need to, like, wonder what you're going to do. Keep it warm. Let me show you a new trick and a new crust. <laughs> so we're keeping this warm. I got it down to simmer. Just keep it warm. We'll stir it. This is a, like a professional mandolin. You don't have to go, like, get a professional mandolin. It's just the one that we have. I don't know what one like this metal, it's what like we use in a restaurant. They're like 120, I don't know. And, but you can buy plastic ones, box ones. You don't have to go to the, for the full whammy, okay? But they really uh, 
a cool because you can slice vegetables very quick. You can julienne vegetables really quick. You can do a lot of things with this mandolin. But they're kind of dangerous, so you like got to like know how to work one. On the opposite side here, here, let me show you this. On the opposite side here are these different blades you can see and these little uh, levers that you can sort of shape. And one of the shapes, as I said, is this julienne. Now, they also come with this sliding. It's a guard that you put in there. You know, we're in New York. I mean, somebody's walked away with the guard. You know, I, I can't, you know. <laughs> if that happens to you, you know, try a towel, you know. But what we're going to do is we're going to, and you got to watch your fingers because these blades are sharp, 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 okay? Potato on the run. That's probably why they make the guard, you know? So what I've done is I've julienned, and you can do this with carrot, you can, all kinds of things. I've julienned some potato. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I have them in this cold water because I don't want them to turn. The air gets to them, they get oxidized, but you can't like put a whole bunch of these right out of the water into your oil. What kind of oil? Vegetable oil. Squeeze as much of that as you can out. Then I'm gonna give you another secret. Before you put them in the oil, get a few paper towels or a clean cloth and make sure you just go and try to get as much of that water as you can out of there. Squeeze it out, okay? All right, now we're gonna try to finish this thing. And so, instead of the traditional, let's see if they work. So, they seem to be working. Now, if you're doing this on the stove, you don't have one of these Mac Daddy fryers like we have here. Yeah, I don't have one at home. I mean, I got to fry it. When I fry, I got to fry in the stove. But let me tell you, use a pot, whatever kind of uh, big vessel you have that you're going to fry in. Never fill the oil more than halfway. So when you fry at home, you fry in the stove, the volume goes up when you add something, just like it did there. And unless you want to renovate your house, <laughs> keep the oil level like halfway, okay? Because it will expand. 360 degrees. You should also, if you do some frying at home, you should invest in one of those inexpensive uh, thermometers to, to know when the oil is. Also keep in mind, just because the oil is 360 degrees, you put the potatoes in, it's not going to stay at 360 degrees because you just put, put something cold in, a, in something hot, so it'll go down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, while I'm frying the potatoes, simmering the stew, come back, I'll show you what it looks like, folks. Stick around. Doc Gibbs. So before we move on for the chicken pie, then basically what I do is I got the pie ready. This thing is heavy too. Put that in a little casserole to take to the table. And then, you know, you can always switch it up a little bit, but what you do is you could always put a piece of pastry on this, or a pie dough, bake it, be delicious. But what I do this time around is take the fried potatoes and just kind of do this fried potato thing like this. And, and then, you know, it just kind of, it's a little different and, and it's certainly good. And I, I bet the kids wouldn't have any problem eating these, uh, this here fried potatoes. And there you have it, it's very simple, just like that, okay?
I took some fresh spinach and cooked it down and took it out of the pan and now I squeezed a lot of the water out of it. So I have fresh spinach now that's just been blanched. Tiny bit of olive oil, little bit of water, salt, pepper. Portobello mushroom. It's sort of the king of mushrooms, right? Or the steak of mushrooms. So <clears throat> I sliced it, cleaned it up. And what I've been doing, I've been cooking these in a little bit of olive oil. See, and they get like really steaky like this. You know, just delicious. Okay? So I got that component. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, next component. We want to add some butter. And we're going to make a roux. The reason why we're going to make a roux is because for this next component, I need to have a bechamel sauce. Okay? If for some reason you just landed... <laughs> yes, it is Emerald Live. <laughs> but we are doing casseroles, and this next one we're doing is the mushroom spinach four cheese lasagna. Okay? So we're going to add the flour now. We're going to make this roux. Once this roux cooks for about four or five minutes, we don't need a lot of color in it. We're not making a gumbo. I actually want to keep the stage of it blonde anyhow. And then the next thing that we're going to do is add the milk. And then that's basically what a bechamel sauce is or a cream sauce. Now, if we added cheese to this, it'd become a compound sauce, and we'd have a cheese sauce or a Mornay sauce, okay? Bechamel is one of those five mother sauces. Once you have this, you can do all kinds of things with bechamel. Now, how do I uh, like to season it? And remember, the same thing as I told you earlier. Once this comes to a boil, that's when you'll know how thick it is. Now I want to flavor it. Fresh nutmeg, okay? Fresh nutmeg is one of those great things in bechamel. And one of those things that I love in this type of lasagna, you know? Then a little salt. Mm, 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 mm. Some pepper. Now, you can either find those no-bake noodles that they come out with a couple of years ago, right? It's amazing. You don't even have to blanch them anymore. Just put them in the oven, no-bake. Like an hour later, you got lasagna. Or... You can be like me, and uh, we did it the old-fashioned way today. So we uh, blanched our pasta, our lasagna sheets, okay? Yes, I have them all slightly oiled. You should try that. After you drain them, even manicotti, just put a little oil on them like that. You'll save yourself a lot, a lot of trouble when you go to assemble this thing. And so, you know how they, you know, they break in a million pieces, and it's like a puzzle, you know? If I wanted to build a puzzle, I would have bought one. One of those thousand, <laughs> thousand piece ones, you know? Now, a bechamel has come to a, to a boil, and uh, we're in there. And let's go to the next component. Fresh mozzarella cheese. Fresh ricotta. Fantina. Fantina. <laughs> And Parmesan Reggiano. So now we're going to mix those cheeses together. And then we have quattro formaggi. Four cheeses. <laughs> All right, here's the deal. Watch this. We're going to start layering this with a little layer of the bechamel on the bottom. Then... We're going to take those mushrooms and we're going to put them just kind of like that nice steaky thing on the bottom there. Okay? Then we're going to take some spinach, just a little bit. Now we're going to establish the bottom layer. So we've got this layer here and this layer here. 
It's like a puzzle, but a tasty one. All right, after this layer, folks, now what I'm going to do, now that I've got the bottom established, we're going to add a little bit more of the spinach. <laughs> and um, some of the four cheeses. Oh, yeah, man. And then I'm going to add a little bit more bechamel, and I'm going to do another layer. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Stick around, folks. Doc Gibbs. casseroles tonight and we just dished up that chicken pie with the uh, pum frites <laughs> <laughs> or potato crust top we did got a little bechamel left and um, gonna taste it re-season it salt pepper and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with that matter of fact good way for you to check the thickness also of your bechamel sauce you might have heard the uh, cooking term to coat a spoon. Okay, if your uh, bechamel can coat a spoon, see, that's what that means. Then the thickness is just perfect, okay? Don't let them bother you, ma'am. <laughs> now, that lasagna, you want to bake 350 degrees. Uh, it's got to get color. And uh, I also, so what I mean by that, it's going to be at least 30, 45 minutes. But it may, depending on your oven, take. <sighs> yeah, that looks pretty good, huh? Oh, by the way, if you didn't notice, when I got done layering it, as these ladies will tell you, I uh, went in my fridge where I always have a backup of Parmesan Reggiano cheese. And so I decided to uh, sprinkle a little on top and uh, baking it like that. What I'm doing is I'm just releasing it. See, from the sides, I'm releasing it. Why keep it prisoner all night, right? Just <laughs> let it rest a couple of minutes. Let's come over here for a second. I said, you know, to myself at the break, self! <laughs> it's exactly, it's, that's how it works. <laughs> how can I kick it up another notch for these folks, right? So I uh, got some spinach that I had left and I had some parsley. And I figured, well, why not fry it, okay? So basically, what we're doing is we're going to do some fried spinach here. You ever had fried spinach, Doc? Oh, yeah, babe. Probably goes good with that uh, casserole. Oh, yeah. So I first had this, I don't know how many years ago, and I said, fried spinach? These guys have got to be kidding me. And then I started frying uh, a lot of things, and spinach is one of them. You can fry arugula, you can fry parsley. Just fry it real good in that vegetable oil. Make a great little garnish. So I'm going to take this out now, drain it real good. Same thing with the bechamel. You got a little extra? Hey, add a little bit of uh, nice balsamic vinegar in there, and you can make it your sauce, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our plate. And we're going to just take a little bit of that balsamic now, bechamel, on the bottom. And we're going to take a wedge. You should let it set a little bit more, but I just can't wait. You know what I mean? I mean, life's too short to not have lasagna. Let's see if it layered okay. 
Put that right on the old. Some of that fried spinach and a little bit more of that delicious, okay, a little of that balsamic. And there you have it, folks. It's that simple, okay? Oh, yeah, baby. Hey, I'm Emeril Lagasse. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. See you tomorrow, everybody.